What's up everyone? Welcome to another video. In this video, I'll show you how to fix the loud tapping or clicking noise coming from the dashboard. In a 2005 through 2013 generation Chevy Impala. This is a common problem and is the result of faulty blend door actuators. It's likely that some of the teeth stripped off of the internal plastic gears, resulting in the ticking sound. I will show you the location of each one and how to replace it. I will also disassemble an actuator and show a workaround to fix this problem without installing a new replacement actuator. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe for more how to and review videos. Now let's get started. There are three different actuator locations responsible for the ticking sound, but they are all the same part. They are located here, here, and here. This one controls hot versus cold air for the driver side. This one controls hot versus cold air for the passenger side. And this one controls recirculating air versus fresh air. There is also a fourth actuator here, which controls distribution, floor versus face versus defrost. However, this is a different actuator and not a typical cause of the ticking. First, I will quickly show the location of the driver side actuator. To get a look at it, let's remove this panel. There are two screws holding it on. One here, and one here. These require a seven millimeter socket to remove. One screw, and two screws. The two screws removed, just pull the plastic cover off. There are four clips on the cover that just push into four slots underneath the dash. One slot, two slots, three slots, four slots. And with the plastic cover removed, there's a steel cover that's revealed. It's held in place with two screws also requiring a seven millimeter socket to remove. One screw, out. Two screws, out. And out of the way. And now, with the covers removed, we can get a look in here. I'm going to move this harness out of the way so we can see the actuator. And here it is. That's the actuator with one of the screws that holds it on. This one is the most challenging to get to, but it's doable. Now, let's check out the two actuators in the passenger side. To access them, open the glove box. When the glove box is open, look at the top for two tabs. Here is one, and here is the location of the second one, which is broken off in this vehicle. Push up on the plastic housing, or down on the glove box, to clear the tabs, and let the glove box continue to open. Here is another look at the tabs. The first tab, and the second tab, which is broken, but goes here. With the glove box open, the two actuators are visible. Here is the one that controls the hot versus cold air door, and here is the one that controls the fresh air versus recirculating air door. This white plastic piece is the door, and you can see the white plastic shaft on the end of the door going into the actuator. Now, let's take a close look at how to remove and install one of these actuators, using this one as an example because it's the easiest to access and to film. There are two screws securing it in place. Here, and here. These require a 5.5 millimeter socket to remove. So, let's remove the screws. Top screw, out. Bottom screw, out. And actuator, out. And the actuator is connected to the wiring harness with this connector. To disconnect it, first lift the tab on the connector so the slot in the tab will clear the protrusion on the actuator. Then, pull the connector out. With the actuator out of the way, let's take a look at this vent door. It is free to rotate by hand. The actuator is what keeps it in position. There are flats on the door shaft, which mate with the flats in the actuator output, so when the actuator rotates, the door rotates with it. It is important to note that the actuator cannot be rotated by hand. Do not try to force it. When installing a replacement actuator, Install the actuator onto the door shaft, then rotate the whole assembly to line up the two actuator mounting holes. This will rotate the door and the actuator together. Now let's open up an actuator and check it out, and go over a workaround to make the HVAC system work without replacing the actuator. The actuator casing is two pieces, secured with six tabs around the perimeter. I planned to lightly pry up the tabs to disassemble it, but these tabs were very weak and easily broke off. I left two tabs intact at the connector, so we can reassemble it later. With the case split, we can see that there is a motor and several gears. The motor has a worm gear on the output shaft. Worm gears are self-locking, 
which is why you cannot rotate the actuator output that connects to the vent door. And all of these gears are present to reduce the speed and increase the torque at the vent door relative to the motor. This type of motor typically rotates around 1800 RPM, and the output at the vent door probably rotates somewhere around 6 RPM. That's a turndown ratio of 300. That's just a ballpark number. I could count the teeth on all these gears and provide the exact number, but it doesn't provide any benefit. Notice that the output where the door shaft connects can rotate freely. There are no hard stops. The actuator has a function where it stops when it detects excessive amp draw from over torque when the door hits its physical limits. This look inside the actuator was necessary to lead me into showing a workaround for functional airflow without replacing the actuator. For this specific vent door that controls the cold air versus the hot air, the air is cold when the flats are vertical, and the air is hot when the flats are horizontal. It is winter here, and it's freezing! I almost got sick filming this with no hat on, just so my hair would look cool in the video. And it doesn't even look cool! I definitely want hot air for the next several months, so let's lock it in the hot air position. Remove the gear connecting the shaft output so it can rotate freely. Insert the actuator onto the vent door shaft. Get in there! Rotate the actuator so the mounting holes line up, while the vent door does not rotate and stays in the desired hot air position. Install the mounting screws to secure the actuator housing. Reinstall the gear so the worm gear will keep the door locked in the desired position. Out of the way, wires! And snap the cover back onto the actuator housing. Then, leave the actuator unplugged so it won't tick. Now the vent is locked in the desired position with no annoying ticking. This can be a workaround if the circumstances are correct for you. For this actuator that controls the recirculation versus fresh air door, it is currently in the fresh air position. I personally always use fresh air and never use recirculate. So I can just unplug this actuator to eliminate the ticking sound. And the HVAC system will always pull fresh air. But that's just a workaround. Of course, you are welcome to replace the actuator to maintain full functionality. It's just two screws and a connector. And one last quick tip. To gain additional access to this area, just push out and remove these two pivot pins at the bottom of the glove box. Then the glove box can be completely removed, providing quite a bit of extra space to work. So, I think that covers it. I've showed you the location of all three blend door actuators, how to replace one took a look inside an actuator, and showed a workaround to eliminate the tapping sound if the weather permits. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Drop any comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.